today's topic is accounting unit two module three the past people as prepared and presented by mr g and this module is based on planning and decision making and first part of the question asks the outline three objectives of budgeting I have listed on your screen here seven info. First one, planning. Budgeting is a formal means by which investigation leads us to a financial statement of future intent. The formal aspect of preparing a budget through a budget committee provides for participation in the planning process. Okay, two, coordination. Organizations are complex arrangements of separate parts whose coordination is necessary to achieve the best results for the organization as a whole. The budget can act as a form of coordination of human effort by allowing separate parts of the organization within the firm to work together to form plans and monitor situations. And three, communication. The budget can be used to communicate plans and control information. Four, motivation. A budget provides a target which can influence aspiration level and motivation within an organization. Five, Control, a budget serves to control specific operation activities or groups and to prevent wastage and inefficiency. Six, performance evaluation. The budget can be used to measure the performance of individuals or group by monitoring the ability to achieve targets. Authorization. The budget can be used to authorize expenditure or the pursuit of certain initiatives. Once the budget has been approved, it can become a permission to spend. The second part, part B, we ask for a production budget and uh, a schedule of direct materials required. Okay. So the, the Lambert company manufactures wooden desks. The production manager needs to determine how much lumber should be ordered for the months of August, September, and October 2018. Budgeted sales for the last five months uh, 2017 uh, as follows. And the sales are given to us here in units. Each desk required 40 feet of lumber at a cost of $85 per square foot. The economy wants to maintain an inventory of this equal to 20% of the following month's sales. At the beginning of August, 124 completed this on hand. The company maintains an inventory of lumber equal to 15% of the next month's need. At the beginning of August, 36, 12 square feet of lumber were on hand. Inventory of lumber at 31st of October is estimated to be 3696 square feet. Okay, we turn to the answer across here. Okay. In order to do this, you have to know this formula here. The expected sales add the desired inventory, the ending inventory that is, will give us the total required units. And from that, we minus the beginning inventory, we get the required production. Okay, the reason for adding on the inventory to the sales is because you, this is what you want to produce as well. You are going to add them on to your sales because you need to produce them. And 
the ending inventory is part of the sales for the next month. The beginning inventory, on the other hand, you don't need to include them in your production because you already have them in your stock in hand by the time that date arrives. So you minus them out and get your required production. Okay, so we put in the sales first across the months. 620, 580, 580. The desired ending inventory is 20% sorry of the next month's sales. So this 106 here would be 20% of the 530 here. The 116 would be 20% of the 580 here. 120 on the other hand would be 20 percent of the 600 here okay and we finish we add those two together and we get the total required units from those we're going to minus what we already have on hand we 124 we are told that at the beginning of august 124 completed this on hand okay minus it and we get 602. Now the desired ending inventory becomes the opening inventory of the next month. And the desired ending inventory here becomes the opening inventory of the following month. And 120 would be the opening inventory of the next month. We are finished. We just minus the figure and we have the required production. That take care of the first part of the the next part of it. Requires a schedule of direct materials required. Notice it does not ask you for the payment. Okay, so it means this piece of information here. Eighty-five dollars a square foot was not be would not be used. Okay, from the production budget, we put in the amounts required, and we multiply it by the amount. Of materials required per unit, which is 40. From here, 40 square feet of lumber. So we get total square feet required for production 24,080, 21,600, 23,360. And again, we go into the same formula desired and then inventory, add on, and minus in the big, beginning inventory. Okay, and desired and in inventory, we are told is 15% of the next month needed. So 15% of this will come here, and 15% of this will come here, and we are given the 3696 over here. The ending inventory for October. And them, and we get the total materials required here. Then we minus the beginning direct materials. These amount coming from here, the desired ending inventory becomes the opening inventory of the next month. And this one will go to October. Direct materials required, and we have the amount here to answer the question here for the thing. Man. The last part of the question explain the concept of standard costing. Four marks. 
a standard is a predetermined course or budgeted course which is used for planning and control purposes. In standard costing, actual results are compared and evaluated against the standard course, a process called variance analysis. The development of a standard involves identifying the types of material and labor to be used in production and their related prices and quantities. From these, the standard will be set. So that's enough for four marks. You have four points there at least. <laughs> Two types of standard costing and explain one type. Okay, I took um, two types to mean uh, ideal and practical. Okay, ideal standard costing set standards only attainable under the best circumstances or most favorable condition. It assumes nothing that can go wrong will occur. Okay, the emphasis is on the word ideal right and so you'll have ideal conditions to work under and uh, perfect materials and all of your uh, factory and so on there will be no downtime and all of that okay the labor unions would not plumber for increased wages and would not strike all those are involved in ideal standard cost in certain standards the practical standards are much tighter, but they are attainable. Keyword is attainable even under adverse conditions. Right? So even if things like strikes and so on take place, you can still meet your standard. And uh, even if you don't have uh, ideal conditions to work on, on the you're still gonna make your standard, okay? So that brings us to the end of the presentation.